Boom. That's the sound you heard by the hundreds after the Browns got their first victory <laughs> from all the victory fridges around town. Locks dropped off and mayhem ensued. I'm sure. The Browns win the Super Bowl. But uh, since since we, they did get the win here, we're going to give them the nod and give them the leadoff spot, and we're going to talk about some Browns. Uh, first and foremost, you gotta, we got to talk about the man who made it all happen. We Baker give, Mayfield, let's go. Give Baker Mayfield some love here. Uh, me and Jay Wayne were most pretty much Baker guys. I, I oh, mean, I'm a Baker guy. I've stamped it, planted a flag, or whatever you want to call it. We had a couple battles on the show with Big Co, who's none of us are necessarily quarterback guys, and it's not something we spend a ton of time talking about on the show and, and breaking down when we do rookie breakdowns. But we definitely loved Baker Mayfield, and Big Co was. Not necessarily a huge fan, more of a Lamar camp, camp Lamar, which that was a house divided in a lot of uh, circles. Sure. I don't know that ne Big Co is necessarily against Baker Mayfield. No. He was really just pulling for Lamar over Baker and in really, a fantasy And really all of that came down to when we were talking about rookies and rookie draft, really where those conversations came in. But Casey's right. There was definitely some you know heated battles on the podcast here over those two guys and of course, as soon as that game was over, I was texting these two guys about, you know, how, I, although I still really believe that if Lamar Jackson was able to get starts and play a game in the NFL, he's going to, it's going to make, yeah, that's an if because Flacco's playing well. But Flacco's elite again. Right. Well, <laughs> we'll talk about, we'll talk about Lamar later because he, he doesn't earn, he hasn't earned any talk right now because he's on the bench. But sure. Ba I'll Baker, give you, I'll give you the, the do real quick of what you were saying on, on Lamar. We get it. When he gets on the field, there's a good chance because of his rushing ability that there is fantasy point potential is very high. And that was the crux of your argument the That's whole time. That's all I said. It, but it does come down to being able to play the position to stay on the field sure. to continue to be valuable at that position. Which and, and immediately you see Baker steps onto the field. What I, There was a, a tweet. Somebody put it up, uh, put the little replay up. The second pass in a row where he gets on the field, completed the pass, gets back on the field, takes another snap, completes another pass, and I think it might have been Higgins, just threw his hands up like they scored a touch, like gave the touchdown signal, but it was for two completions in a row. Like, yeah. I, I, think it, I think it was Warren Sharp said this offense is so thirsty, and he showed that, that the, def the, offense, that the uh, wide receiver threw his hands up yeah. in excitement that they completed two passes in a row. Said, and oh, not, shit, we're moving the ball. Right, exactly. <laughs> and not, not, I'm not going to take, take one shot at Tyrod here about – whether or not he's a good quarterback, because I lo I like Tyrod. It's, I've I've measured good quarterbacks by winning NFL games, and Tyrod has done that. Right. But there's no doubt, there's no way you can say that when Baker Mayfield came in there, it wasn't a shot in the arm, it wasn't a kick in the butt on that yeah. whole offense. And when he it, it it was his poise and his confidence, and it it you know it was just uh, the the aggressiveness with the with the football and throwing it in tight windows and throwing it to Jarvis Landry in bunches and pepper and callaway you know it right. was just amazing and obviously the tide turned really quick the momentum started building in that stadium and you could uh, feel the energy sure you and could you could feel it through the tv it the, was amazing i think i think everybody watching except for jets fans were pulling for the browns to win that game the announcers were just calling for mayfield it was just a very strange scenario where as you know everybody basically wanted baker mayfield to play um, Joe but, Buck and, and right. Troy Aikman said his name a million and times it, it, like he was playing. Tyrod did what Hugh Jackson thought Tyrod was going to do for the rest of the season and kept him in those first two games and without with a kicker they're right. 2 and 0 oh or 1 and 0 oh, oh, 1 and 0 oh, 0 oh, 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 1 or however you, whatever it is. Definitely could have won those two games if they had a kicker and that's what Tyrod does is not turn the ball over right. and keeps you in it to win the game. And Hugh and Jackson's with, fighting for his life. He's he's wants to be the coach of this team and he saw that as his best opportunity to continue to have this job and be able to we drafted this guy number one in Baker Mayfield and be able to slowly maybe work him in maybe when you're out of the chase necessarily but the season's not really over and you can get him some live game action just happened well so to people, be a lot quicker as soon as you see this though as soon as you see Baker doing this you got the instant reaction sure. of well how come you didn't play him already because he obviously has to look good in practice but you, you did well get, and everybody's big deal is that 
you know, you didn't give him the run enough run with the ones or no any one. run, any, any run. run with the ones. And you saw him come out in the preseason and play well with some ones here. There was still some ones on the field in the preseason when he was playing with them. But then you saw um, him and you Tyrod saw him, came off. He injured his wrist in the third right. game of that preseason. Yeah. And which is like the big like basically almost a regular season game as far as preseason goes. And Baker came in and you saw Baker be a little tight, be a little rattled and right. struggled a, a little bit. And, and that's to be expected right um but, but for the most part tyrod looked excellent in the preseason tyrod looked great and he looked pretty good through the first two games right what, i guess what i was starting to say there what was crazy is at the beginning of that game it just whatever the browns were doing it just seemed like they just were the browns wanted tyrod to or right. wanted tyrod off the field and baker on the field like the 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 blitz and the pressures coming from new york were, were coming in hot and heavy tyrod didn't have a ton of time when you watch the all 22 footage it seems like they're running maybe even some longer developing routes and not giving him these quick throws they didn't run the ball for the first eight plays yeah with it, carlos hyde who ended up being the player of the goddamn game the, like, the was, game you got started. a great offensive line what you did all off season in the preseason was run the ball smash it you went right down the field in every preseason game that you came out there and you handed the ball y'all boys went right down the field <laughs> And you didn't do any of that in this game. There was some blitzes coming, and then for whatever reason, when Baker comes in, all of a sudden the blitzes are the ball came out quick on those first couple of Baker uh, passes, but the blitzes started to slow up a little bit, as if Bowles kind of backed off just a hair. Like every time they run a three four, every time there was five guys coming off the edge with Tyrod, right. and all of a sudden there's still some guys coming. I don't know if the offensive line they they huddled up and said, "Hey, this is what they're doing," and started picking it up. But it did seem that the blitz kind of went decreased a little and that they they kind of figured it out so it's just it was just a strange sequence of events to baker coming in there and then yeah like you guys alluded to like you could just feel the energy when he got in the game of just how the tide was turning immediately upon first completion absolutely uh and so not to take anything away from from what baker did but i think tyrod is getting crushed right now and Hugh's getting crushed right now but they were she was doing what he thought was right for this team to try to get them on track moving forward it's not like Hugh Jackson was coaching the Patriots and <laughs> ran these boys into the ground they haven't been good in decades right yeah. like yeah well Tyrod was literally getting crushed I mean right and, and Baker admitted that in in his post-game interview where he was talking about the Jets were throwing some weird fronts at us and some stunts and it's like they were either blitzing five or they were dropping a a, a a defensive end and bringing a safety like screen right. got him on a third down well, safety yeah, he, blitz. Well, that, he would be the slot corner, but Adams was coming in and, and getting him on blitzes. They Just they had exotic. very very exotic blitz schedules to start that game, and a lot of trick like you said, and, a lot a lot of showing pressure, dropping out, and then bringing a bringing you well, know heavy pressure from a the one zone side. Blitz, right. yeah. Just like you see offenses start the game with scripts, the defensive the the Jets defense started that game with scripts. Yeah, and they came at you hot and heavy with from all different. directions directions and it it was in it was an an ugly game offensively for both sides of the ball to get started and just brown's got a good defense but the jets have a decent defense and those and their playmakers were making plays right and it was really really nasty defense to get started from the jets and like casey said maybe the offensive line maybe the 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 uh, Browns kind of huddled up a little bit and was like, okay, if they've came from here, they came from there. Let's watch this. Let's watch that. But the, I think most of it was the blitzing from the Jets, a little bit of disrespect for Tyrod's passing. Mm -hmm. And then when he Baker, was holding Baker, on to it a little too long, well, as well. they were, I mean, he well, wasn't helping himself out with that. Casey aspect. did a lot of film review and they were doing a lot of double move, longer, longer play down the longer play development type stuff. And sure, he did underthrow Callaway for a touchdown, and that's Tyrod's fault. But when you've gotten beat up so aggressively right. in the first, that was the four, first time he had a clean game. pocket to throw the ball down the field like that yeah so anyway the jets beat him up and then baker comes in there his first possession was two minute running down the field so i can understand the jets trying to play a little bit of zone or something for a minute just to try to keep from giving up that field goal before halftime but i think they blitzed him right off but then but and he threw yeah. it right into the blitz yeah. and it, it looking sharp looking sh nobody was less than just blown away by Baker's ability to come right off the sidelines in that two minute drill and bang, bang, bang down the field. I mean, it was it was phenomenal. It really was. So I, that was I'm tr I'm giving Baker his due. And when it comes down to fantasy, is just you know there's playmakers on this offense. They got a good offensive line, and Baker automatically excuse me jumps right into a potentially startable fan 
football situa- fantasy situation. So certainly in two quarterbacks. Right. Realms, well, he's fired up immediately. Yeah. Obviously, he's in your starting lineup he, in the two quarterback situation. And one quarterback, 12 man league, you might, you'd be playing some matchups and kind of seeing how he develops here and how he takes, you know, uses these playmakers. And then, then really, startability for quarterbacks will come down to how you convert in the red zone. If you're kicking field goals, you're quarterback's right. not going to be great. And he did get lucky. He almost threw a pick in the red zone, but they dropped it. They got a field goal out of it. That was their second sure field did. goal of the game. Um, and, and the game broke their way. It was it was great to see that. They needed a little bit of luck to kick them over that hump. And well, then they had a lot of Baker, not, they've had a lot of bad luck to be right, where they are. Right. But, I mean, it's just like, it, like the left tackle seemed to be blocking better. Well, Landry was making the spectacular catch when Baker was yeah. throwing it to him versus, like, not quite coming up with it when Tyrod's throwing it to him. Like, everybody and just they, the, or in stepped that two it up. Minute offense, they fu- he, he got it smacked out of his hand, and they fumbled. And, and off his, his offensive line it got so it back. So he had yeah. some things bounce their way. Before we, I close shop on Tyrod a little bit, I just questioned the play calling a little bit to start that game and what they were doing. They didn't run the ball at all. Then Carlos Hyde was awesome for the rest of the game. He had like six carries in the first half. He had ended with 23. Yeah. Um, and then you run a flea flicker before you've even established a run at all. Right. And it was just like, I don't know what he you almost what got y'all, It was almost like you were setting up my man to fail and just to put like, Todd Haley was like, "All right, let's get let's get Tyrod out of here. Yeah. I can start You're, running my offense now." I, yeah. I think it was DP that was like, "Todd Haley must have went up to he diagnosed Tyrod with a concussion." Right. He was hey, like, buddy, "You got a concussion." concussion. <laughs> right. Well, all right. So, so anyway, the rest of the offense is unlocked for sure. Right? This was right. definitely well. Real quick before we get off Baker, um, obviously the the comeback win was impressive, and the accuracy that you saw, the resolve, the quick decision making. Diagnosing the defense pre-snap, scrambling around, keeping plays alive, right. making throws on the run, converting the Russell Wilson-esque right. escapability, right? Not really looking to run, but able to run to keep things alive, right? Converting first down after first down, like all these things that he did were great. But I, I think that the thing that almost impressed me more than all of that was his post-game interview. He's just like as humble as can be i mean the first thing is he mentions the crowd and how happy he is for the city of cleveland to get this win and get this monkey off their back then they go into like the pressure and stuff and he talks about tyrod and how he you never want to come into a game like that you don't want to win the job like this right when your captain gets concussed right that's not what he win the job like this i did like the fact that he called him his captain right that was cool um but that, I mean, that's the game of the foot. That's the game of football, and he's ready for this challenge. Michael Irvin asked him, "How are you going to deal with this pressure that the whole city is now placing on your shoulders?" You know what he said? He said, "I didn't do all this by myself, exactly, and I'm not going to handle it like that." Yeah, he's like, "We got a lot of good players." He gave Jarvis a ton of credit. He gave the defense credit, the coaches credit. He's just a like a class act. He's, the NFL Network baked him a fucking cake. And yeah. he said, it's Carlos Hyde's birthday, and he had a baby. Let's, this is for Carlos. Right. You know? Yeah. It's just the first thing on his mind is his teammates. Yeah, solid. And caring about these dudes. And he just he has that innate ability to make everyone around him better. And that's uncoachable. It's unteachable. And you combine that with him being an extremely hard worker and having all the confidence in the world that I don't think you should confuse for cockiness. And I'm just super excited about Baker Mayfield and the whole Browns future. You can confuse it for cockiness. Some people aren't as good as hiding it as others. Most p- human beings who play a sport at that level are fairly cocky human beings. Some people are just better at hiding it and fronting in front of people. But you need that swagger like he has to play this position. Like, especially with these younger guys playing this game in this locker room. Like, they are going to respect that. They're going to latch onto that. Like... These Browns do. They love what Baker Mayfield is bringing. And they to the know he has here. their yeah. back. Right. Not, not everybody's Tim Duncan. Right. Okay. And and you know what? And behind closed doors, Tim Duncan's probably like, I'm the best goddamn center <laughs> I ever played this fucking game. Like, yeah. Yes. But then you got clowns like Jason McIntyre just grasping onto anything you can because they don't like this guy and said he wasn't going to be good about how what starting quarterback brings a cell phone goes back in the in the locker room and grabs his cell phone the first thing and brings his cell phone to all the interviews like a, a 22 year old millennial kid who just won the Browns first game what did he do with it nothing he didn't tweet anything he didn't do anything like he just had it he was like he likes his cell phone like even when him and Colin Cowherd were talking about it Cowherd kind of slipped up and was like well you know I'd probably grab my phone and like he was like because he was I, kind of agreeing with what McIntyre was saying and he was like really that's what he did really 
And then he was like, <laughs> then he was talking. They went further, and then he was like, well, you know, maybe I would grab my phone. And then they kind of, oh, well, no. And then the host, the the girl, I forget what they just switched girls. I don't listen to a lot of cowherd, but yeah, they switched girls. And she was like, why? What? What are you? So maybe he was texting his grandma or his mom. Yeah, like, right. Yeah. What are you so upset about? I take my phone all over the place too. Right. So does that guy. That guy lives on his phone, guaranteed. Yeah. Jason McIntyre doesn't do anything without his phone. He's it's, a clown. We should see how many tweets he has. But it's. 58,000. Yeah, it's oh, definitely it's tens of thousands. So Sign something million. to do with your life. <laughs> Anyhow, let's get into the achievement unlocked with the rest of these Browns here, which would be an offense. 